If you're anything like me, then you can't handle horror. Yeah, I've played Resident Evil 7 and 8 and 2 Remake, but I had to give up on Resident Evil 2 Remake on the second playthrough. And don't get me started on Subnautica. I played the Resident Evil games because they're simply so good that I couldn't miss out. So cue the reveal and launch of Callisto Protocol. And with Glenn Schofield at the helm, it had to be worth playing, surely. So first I'll focus on the horror and answer the question, should us scaredy cats play it? And then go into my issues with the game and if I think it's worth your money. <laughs> So let's get straight into the horror. In the first 20 minutes of gameplay, Callisto creates an eerie atmosphere and I was on edge. The prison is dark and dreary and crawling through these maintenance tunnels is very claustrophobic. But then you get hit with a jump scare, then another, and another, and guess what? One more jump scare. In the first hour, they did the jump out of the vent or air spraying out of a pipe five or six times, and it took all the suspense out of it, and then from then on, the game wasn't scary whatsoever. So if you're a little baby like me, then this game is fine to play. Now into my very, very long list of gripes with the game. Callisto is more action than survival horror. Resources are somewhat scarce, but I never even came close to running out of ammo. There's a massive focus on melee combat, and this needs some fix. A lot of the combat is about dodging enemies' attacks and swinging at the right time. So a normal person would assume that X or Circle is the dodge, but no. Dodging is set to the left analog stick. All you do is hold left or right when the enemy attacks, and then alternate directions if they do successive attacks. This system is fecking terrible. It took me a few hours to get used to it, and then after that, it was so easy to do, but it just felt so clunky. It's like they wanted to make artificial difficulty by forcing you to learn a whole new system of dodging. And look, we're not at the start of 3D gaming where people were still figuring out what control schemes is best. Dodging should be set to a button rather than the analog stick. And it's all a big shame because otherwise the combat feels quite good. The hits are meaty and the gore, holy lord, it's just fantastic. They implemented the dual sense really well, giving each hit that extra bit of oomph, but the combat would be so much better if dodging was set to a button. The ranged weapons feel great too. Once again, they're meaty and you can feel each bullet ripping the enemies to shreds. But there, another issue comes up. Swapping weapons is so cumbersome. You have to press right on the D-pad, scroll up or down, and then press X when you're on the weapon, and then you have to wait for this really long animation. And I know there will be some people saying, oh, they made it like this so that it feels tense. But that's a dated way of making games. Tank controls and fixed cameras work to take control away from the player back when games weren't as sophisticated. But now games have come a long way, and we don't need to rely on these clunky systems to make a game tense or scary. And ultimately, it discourages you from crafting new weapons because it just means you have one more weapon to scroll through. The combat falls apart when you're fighting multiple enemies. They attack you randomly so you could dodge a combo from one enemy and then get smacked in the back from another, and it was overall just frustrating. Single enemy combat was grand, but anything more than one enemy and it would just become a mess. The final few chapters really threw the kitchen sink at you, and these combat encounters just turned into a mess of enemies that crawl on the ground that you can barely see, enemies that drop from the ceiling, and other enemies that sprint toward you and force you into a QTE. Another thing is that it's very difficult to know if enemies are going to do a certain combo, which is absolutely ridiculous considering how small the enemy pool is. After my 8 or 10 hours with the game, I should know exactly what combo enemies should be doing, but sometimes the same enemy would do a 3 hit or a 2 hit combo, and I struggled to find any difference in their tails, so it was all just a guessing game from there. And then in the end, the game had an over-reliance on these 2 headed enemies, and they were actually pretty easy on their own, but then they just start lumping more enemies at you while you're fighting them. And then the final boss encounter, which I won't spoil, has enemies crawling on the ground that you can barely see, so I was getting killed by the enemies on the ground more than the actual boss. And in the end, I probably only died 5 or 6 times in these encounters, but they just really highlighted how clunky the combat system becomes when there's a lot of enemies. Another little thing is that at one point I went into a room, saw an enemy on the ground, and did what everybody does in horror games, and I stomped on them to make sure they were dead. There was no reaction from them, so I assumed they were dead. I then returned to the same room for story purposes like 10 minutes later, and the enemy came to life even though I'd already checked it. Chess would randomly spawn these little ticks that would deal damage to you, and it's just a little annoyance that would take health from me. At times you would encounter an enemy that you can't avoid a QTE with, and then they take health from you and you go into the next encounter with like 75% health and it just wasn't your fault. The checkpoints are really bad, oftentimes sending you back 5 minutes and then making you recollect all the resources that you collected before in that safe room, and then also 
having to upgrade your weapons because it doesn't save it. The game is filled to the brim with stupid vents and walls to crawl and squeeze through and they're just annoying and all of these things just added up to a rather mediocre experience that I would struggle to recommend at full price. The story setup is good, you're a delivery man that got in prison in a maximum security prison off on another planet and then all hell breaks loose and you have to get out. The plot is very cliche, there's some conspiracy of a medical team researching some virus thing and I mean I wonder where we heard that before but the characters are pretty meh. I think the performances are good and the mocap is great, but there's plenty in the narrative that just feels rushed and unearned. I won't spoil anything, but your character goes from hating a character to risking his life to save them in a very, very short span of time, and it just felt jarring. As a non-horror fan, the game isn't scary, so if you're interested in it, then buy it. As a game though, it has its moments of fun, but I'm left with a sour taste in my mouth, so I wouldn't recommend it at full price. If you're interested in watching a video on another game that I don't think you should spend your money on, watch my Ghostwire Tokyo video on the left there. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff, and I'll see you all on the next video.